Hawaii edition from NPR News. I'm Steve Inskeep. And I'm Don Gagne. When Republicans take over the U.S. House next year, the change may increase the political pressure on the Federal Reserve. Texas Republican Congressman Ron Paul will lead the House subcommittee that oversees the Fed. Among the reasons that is notable is that Ron Paul is the author of a book called End the Fed. We are going to talk about that with David Wessel of the Wall Street Journal. David, good morning. Good morning, Doug. So, broadly speaking, how much unhappiness is there with the Fed in this new Congress? Well, I think there's a lot of unhappiness among the public with the Federal Reserve. A lot of Americans think, basically, the Fed bailed out Wall Street, and it didn't bail out Main Street. Uh, there was a recent Bloomberg poll that found that 39% of those surveyed believe the Fed should be held more accountable to Congress. And fully 16% wanted to abolish the Fed altogether. So I think among many members of Congress, there's some reaction to this public animosity to the Fed, particularly among some of the newly elected uh, Tea Party Republicans. Now we have Ron Paul, uh, not newly elected, but he is in a new position of power. He spoke with NPR this week, and we will hear the full interview this weekend. But he started out by simply telling us that he wants more information. The main thing I will do to start off with will, will be to continue the effort to at least uh, get transparency on the Fed, to audit the Fed, and know what they've been doing. David, that sounds reasonable. Can the Fed comply? Well, Mr. Paul has already had substantial success in forcing the Fed to provide much more information about the emergency loans it made during the financial crisis. Uh, he failed in his effort, though, to pierce the Fed's independence. Uh, he wants the Government Accountability Office to be able to go through and examine why they make decisions on interest rates to kind of second guess the Fed on monetary policy. Ben Bernanke, the Fed chairman, says that's a line that shouldn't be crossed because it would uh, weaken the Fed's independence from politicians that's kind of inherent in the system. Mm -hmm. uh, Ron Paul has also acknowledged that he, he does indeed have much larger ambitions, and here's how he described them to us. What I want to do is legalize gold and silver, which is the proper monetary system, and compete with the Federal Reserve, and I believe the Fed will eventually end itself because they're working on a monetary system that is not viable. Okay, legalizing gold and silver, what's he talking about? Well, basically, he wants to go back to an earlier era where gold and silver were legal tender and where you could have your dollar bills exchanged for gold or silver at some fixed rate. It's an old system that's largely been discredited. Most economists, many Republicans in Congress think it's a little bit weird and extreme. And although he feels very strongly about it, it's unlikely to move into legislation or anything like that. But how much support is there uh, for that? I don't think there's very much support at all. There's a kind of romantic view that we could go back to something better. Maybe we'd have less chance of hyperinflation. But I think most people, uh, most economists, and most members of Congress, they want to have some control and accountability over the Fed, but they don't want to put it out of business and return to a gold standard, which, after all, is one of the reasons we had the Great Depression a generation or two ago. And, and could this amount to an uncomfortable couple of years for Ben Bernanke, the head of the Fed? Well, I think there'll be a lot of good theater. Uh, Mr. Paul is wonderful to watch at a hearing. He sometimes says things that seem a little bit, as Ben Bernanke put it, when hearing bizarre, like he suggested the Fed had financed Watergate and Saddam Hussein. So maybe Mr. Bernanke will look like the reasonable sober guy against a somewhat unusual member of Congress. But Ron Paul is no longer someone the Fed can ignore. He has a lot of supporters. He's no longer a voice in the wilderness. David Wessel is the economics editor of the Wall Street Journal. He is also 